Hello, Pablo. Que tal? How are you? Very good, and you? Good, good. So, um, el, el chat de hoy que voy a tener con François, lo vamos a hacer en inglés porque, bueno, François está más cómodo y también hay mucha gente fuera de, de España que le interesa. Si tenéis alguna duda o cuestión, lo escribís e intentamos contestar, que también François habla español. So, uh, I'm very, I'm very honored to, to have you here and um, I think it's going to be very interesting. Everybody knows you, so I don't need uh, to introduce you, um, <laughs> but I have a few questions before we go to this. <laughs> thank you, thank, um, you pa thank you, Pablo, for the invitation. It's great uh, to have a talk on Sackable together. Uh, we, we, we met first time at Madrid Fusion in, uh, last January in Madrid. That's right. The backstage was a fast meeting, but the very good energy I feel. So uh, I'm, I'm very, but I know you since long time, your reputation. So very good to talk together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So you are in, in Barcelona. Yes. Uh, how, how is that? I mean, how did you end up in? I live in Barcelona since three years now, or a little bit more, because uh, I've been coming in Barcelona since 30 years. Uh, because Barcelona is Barcelona, uh, Spain yeah. is what it is. Uh, and um, many years ago, I met uh, Julie Soler, and, uh, who passed away a couple of years ago, five years yes. already. Yeah. And uh, he introduced me to Ferran Adria. Yeah. Then I, I, I get into the, the El Bulli family and uh, been uh, working as a consultant for Ferran uh, as uh, developing food, helping helping wow. Ferran to give direction with my aromatic science. And, and then uh, I always wanted to come live in Barcelona because it's an amazing city. It's uh, art, <laughs> cultural, it's near of everything, other countries and, uh, and, um, and Europe. And it's uh, a little bit near of Japan than Montreal. I'm from Montreal. <laughs> uh, and Montreal, there's 14 hours of jet lag. And here, here only seven, so it's it's not it's not too bad. It's, it's not bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. So yes, and, uh, and uh, two years two years ago I came here and uh, I fell in love with uh, with a girl, Isabel, and we are together since that time. I decided to move. That was just the the the, the last uh, the last uh, fire to 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 give me the idea to come to live here, and uh, here I am. Good, good, good. That's that's really good. And, and listen, um, how did you get into sake? Oh, my love story with sake is a long time ago because um, uh, I, I used to work as a sommelier in a restaurant. I don't work as a sommelier anymore, but I'm a sommelier yeah. by art. Yeah. And, uh, but you and were I, the best sommelier in the world. So. Yes, in uh, 1994 <laughs> and, and Sopexa Contest. But in 1989, I take a course of sommelier in Quebec. Uh, north of Montreal and uh, Saint Adele, and rapidly I discovered many things that I didn't know at all. Many wines, beer, uh, spirits, many things, and sake. And uh, I think one or two years after, I I heard that there was a wall contest of sommelier. So I said I should do that. It, this will help me to study more. You know, it's it's like a goal to be better. Yeah. That was yeah. my goal: yeah. is to learn and learn. It's still. I'm learning every day. So, uh, and in uh, and, uh, 1992, I've been chosen to be the candidate for the World Contest in 1995. That was in Tokyo. So, and, uh, and I met a woman. Uh, she's an importer of sake in Montreal now, today. But she was not at the time. She's Japanese. And uh, she decided to help us to understand Japanese culture, uh, she served us sake and everything, and I fall in love totally with Japan culture first, uh, because cu culture Jap of Japan is amazing. The design, the uh, rough, refined, everything, and and then the sake. So I went to Japan in 1995 for the first time, and then I went back maybe I don't know 100 times since that that yeah. day. So uh, so that that's the that's the way everything starts. Yeah. So you you. You had uh, your first sake uh, probably in Japan, or no? Or you no, had... my first sake in Montreal in the nineteen okay. should be in nineteen ninety ninety one more or okay. less. Okay. But okay. Then, yeah, but then and uh, 
Kachiko, Kachiko San, the, the woman, yeah. so, uh, yeah. made me discover a lot of sake in Montreal in 1992, 93, 94. And, uh, and then I said, wow, this is amazing product. Then I went to Japan 1995 for the World Contest. Then I, I, we traveled in Japan. We taste a lot of sake, discover how it was really made. You need to see, you need to touch, you know that. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You need yeah. to see how, how it goes. Uh, books is great, but the real thing is to be on site. And, yeah. uh, and then I went back so many times and always tasting sake everywhere, restaurant, sushi yeah. bar, and going visiting sake brewery also. So it's a, it's a long time love affair. But wow. never in my life I, I thought I would become a master blender of sake. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's amazing. And uh, what about, because sometimes I'm... Many many people maybe don't don't know, but I I deal also with wine. I'm like uh, yeah, exporting yeah. wines to to Asia, and, yeah. and and now some wine people see me as a threat, like oh you are only sake and and all that. <laughs> but and for you maybe it's, it's the same in this in the way that you are of course very well known in the wine world, but now into sake, and and many people might say ah this is just a fashion or something, but they don't know that that the truly wine and sake. They are yeah. not competitors. They should be together. What What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, unfortunately, uh, human always look things like that, and so yeah. you you do want you're a wine expert, you're a sake expert, or you're a food expert. You know. Yeah. I'm, I'm a bit the black sheep because I love everything and I do <laughs> so many things. So I. I'm a curious mind. Since I, I was young and my mother, I was always saying to my mother, why, why, why? You know, yeah. so that's why, you know, I, I was a sommelier. Then I studied to be a chef. Then I studied to understand science. Uh, so I, I, I do many, many things. I'm crazy about perfume. I will do a perfume one day, that's for sure. That's for sure, because it's amazing working with molecules, pure molecules, pure aroma, you know, prima materia. It's amazing. And, and sake is the same. It's, for me, it's all the same. At the end, it's a product that we enjoy to drink and eat. So yeah. um, I try to not see things like that. I try to look at outside of the box uh, and to see, is there something else can we learn? You know, there's something else can we do? So, but people sometimes are a bit, uh, and for sure now people say, okay, Chartier, uh, so many guys is making sake. Why? What? What's that? But <laughs> it's, yeah. not, it's not marketing. It's just it's, the people who know me since 35 years uh, as, a biz, as a working progress, I think it's normal. Uh, I've been doing beer. I will do a new beer also. Uh, I'm doing a project with Dam in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. I will, uh, we, it's finished now. We've done a, we create a new gastronomic beer. It's amazing. Wow. I, yeah, I've done many beers in Montreal also. So you this this you know what I'm into sake because I don't like beer. So that, I, that's maybe funny. you have to, to to push me on that side because yeah. I don't drink beer and and that's why when I discover uh, sake is because I I was living in Japan I didn't like beer and wine was too expensive for me at some point so I I got yeah. into sake. So I, wow. and that's, uh, that's funny. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. It's funny. Be, it's funny because sake is very near of beer as a yeah. product production. The the, yeah. The, yeah. The, the the making of yeah. But but it's completely other taste, other aroma. Yeah. It's completely uh, yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and um, uh, now you are um, master blender for uh, one brewery, uh, yeah. Tanaka Brewery in in Miyagi in Japan. How, how did you start this project? How everything uh, started to grow together? Very, very uh, curious and funny. Uh, I met uh, the new owner of the brewery, the, is uh, Tabata-san, Mr. Yeah. Tabata from Japan. Uh, is, uh, I met him in uh, Paris in 2017, January 2017, to present him a project. But that was not sake was completely another project and uh, and uh, so i had the opportunity because sony sony music and japan and tokyo is my business development agent in japan since three years so uh, and uh, you, you you need to know that uh, sony was the agent of uh, rejoel robuchon chef in japan 
So that's how Joël Robichon became a famous uh, star around the world, especially in Japan, because yeah. Sony has opened many doors for him. So, so, wow. so I, I present a project to Sony. I said, look, I got amazing aromatic project. I think it's for Japan. He said, okay, I think we have someone for you. He came right away from Japan, a very, you know, it's a, it's a huge businessman, Mr. Tabata. He's got 147 company. He's one of the 10 richest men in Japan, but this is not important. He's an yeah. art man. So uh, his daughter, uh, Wakana San, came directly from Japan to Paris. We met, we have an amazing contact right away. You, you know, this is life, contact yes. like yes. with you, yes. contact was so yes. good. And uh, I explained the project and then I met his father, her father like two months after in Paris again. And uh, he said, look, we like your project. We will do it one day, but we have something else for you. Say, okay. And then two months after I had a phone call say, François, we would like you to collaborate with us. We had bought uh, one of the oldest sake brewery in Japan, Tanaka Shuso. Uh, is 230 years old, uh, founded the year of the French Revolution. Yeah, that's, that's funny. Really nice. That's crazy. That's why we, 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 I, I, uh, I tell them they should change the name for uh, Tanaka 1789. And that's oh, really? What, they, they, wow. Yeah, wow. yeah. They changed the name because I think it's too important, especially now this Saki Brewery uh, is a famous one, win many uh, awards in Saki Brewery, yes. but the Saki master take his retreat, the owner die. So that's the way Mr. Tabata bought the, the Saki Brewery to help. He, he want to keep the culture of sake in Japan. is a very link, uh, a man linked to culture, uh, cultural aspect. So, and now it's like a, a phoenix. We're trying to make it rebirth of the second oh. movie. And he asked me, so that day, three years ago, he phoned me and he asked me, okay, could, could you do sake? I said, if I can do sake, I know I never made sake. I know sake. I can talk to you about sake for hours. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, talking and making is two things. Is, yeah. And I said, what can I do there? It's 230 years. You do sake there, the people. So all the background, the story, the, the, the sustainability of, of men craft, everything. So I'm mankind. And I said, I, I don't know what can I, how can I help? He said, come, see. And we'll see. So I went there. I passed a week there. And after two or three days, I had like uh, something open to my eyes. I said, wow, okay. There's no blending story in the, in the sake business. So I said, maybe I can do something here. So, uh, and that's the way everything starts. So I explained my idea to it. Before explaining, I done some blend on site, private, uh, uh, in the lab. I said, let me out the sake. I started and they were like, and they were like, oh, what is what? doing this guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I didn't tell them because I said they will kill me. So I didn't say not to say. Can you let me two three hours in the lab? I want you make all the sake, and uh, we'll see after. I will tell you what I'm doing. So then I'm. I'm I learned. You, you need to know that I learned blending with Pascal Chatonnet. Pascal is uh, one of the world renowned enologists from Bordeaux. He's a flying winemaker. He's uh, the one. He, he's everybody know him as one of the best blender in the wine world. He's the yeah. one who blend held the blend of Vega Sicilia since twenty years. Cos wow. de Stornel, Chateau Beaucastel, you know, like one hundred yeah. different, yeah, yeah, amazing one. I've been doing wine since two thousand eleven in Europe, and he helped me to understand all the blending process and everything. So. And with my aromatic science that I've created in 2004, so knowledge about aroma, knowledge about blending, I said, maybe I can bring something else. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. So I was very humble, you know, walking on ice, on thin ice, uh, just like that, uh, shy. I said, let's try. So I done some blending with their 2017 Vintage first, just like that, bang, bang, bang. And the, the, the result was better than their sake. Honestly. Wow. So wow. I said, okay, we got something here. So I, I tell the, the Toji and the team to come back in the, in the lab, say, uh, taste those six sake. They say, what it is? I said, I don't tell you nothing. 
taste the sake and we'll talk after. So they taste the sake. And then they say, I said to them, so how oh, it is? See, very interesting tasting, but what's the three last one? See, why? See, they are very good sake. Okay, good. I said the three last one are the three first one. Just blend. Different percentage. I say, mm. <laughs> wow! Yeah. Squat, eh? <laughs> and uh, even the Toji, um, um, I call him Junmai San because he's a Junmai freak. So it's a Morikawa San. Uh, he's an amazing Toji. He told me the last one, the sixth one, he said, I've been trying to do that since 10 years. You've done that in two minutes. I said, No, 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 I didn't done that in two minutes. It's your sake. you done it. But I have 55 years old. I've been doing that for 35 years, trying to understand, capture wine, aroma, texture, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So it, it's, yeah, it's a matter of uh, experience. And how, um, so what they were expecting from you in the sense that, uh, uh, okay, you make sake, please, for us and, and, and yeah. you help us. But uh, uh, they didn't think about this blending thing, right? Because it's something that is more Western uh, yeah. kind of culture for the wine and, 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 yeah. and, yeah, and whiskeys yeah. and, and stuff like that. So they, they were not like shocked or, or, or they were like open. But yeah, at the moment that the owner was there, Wakana yeah. San, who, who direct the project, was yeah. she was there. And all the team, the director, the president, everything, and the Toji. And uh, so, you know, I can talk, you know, we can talk and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah. And answer is in the glass. Yeah. So I just proved that we can maybe help to do better sake. That's first thing. Uh, maybe bring a new experience. How? By trying to make sake with a... Uh, that, that are a little bit more near of wine. So that, they didn't know how can I do that. I had an yeah. idea because I've been reading so much about sake making. So I said, oh, maybe we have to change the process. Bang, 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 bang. And also, this is a great story, you know? So we are living in 2020 right now. Uh, two things most important in, co in communication and selling any project. It's storytelling and new experience or experience. Yeah. And so we had something very interesting here. We need to do good sake. That's the first thing. Yeah. So I, I just convinced them that let's try. Maybe we can do something. I can do more than one sake. You asked me to come here to do one sake to sell abroad because the sell and sake, you know, in Japan, the sell each year going down. Uh, the people don't drink much sake as before. The young people yeah. drink beer and anything else. So, yeah. uh, so the the goal was to bring a Western guy uh, with a reputation, with a knowledge, to do sake to sell abroad. Yeah, that that's still the the case. But yeah. then I convince them rapidly that okay, we have more than that. We have a blending idea, like and. Jerez, sherry wine, champagne, uh, whiskey, all the wine, the soul of the product um, arrives or arrives at the moment of the blend. Terroir yeah. is very important, rice, koji, everything. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. blending can upgrade everything. Yeah. Chateau, Chateau Margaux is 42 different plots of wine. Young Vine, Old Vine, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, you yeah. know, bah, bah, bah. Yeah. it's the blending moment, bang, the magic appear or not. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's what I'm trying to do there. I'm very, very, very happy and surprised of the result yet. First real vintage is 2018. I've been working on 17, but we didn't sell. It was yeah. just practicing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So 18 will be ready to sell a uh, market and one month from now, abroad. And, yeah. uh, and uh, I, have, uh, I have some sample of 2019 here that I received yeah. two days ago uh, because I cannot go to Japan right now. Yeah, yeah. Why, with the COVID, uh, yeah. I was supposed to be in Japan uh, last week. But Me too. Me too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, it's terrible. Huh? We cannot. 
Yeah. It, it, it could be worse. We are healthy yeah. right now and uh, yeah. just knock on wood that everybody stay healthy that, and we can uh, get rid of this uh, virus. But uh, it, it, Japan is closed. So I cannot yeah. go and we just finished the production. So they send me the, the sample here. I do pre-blending already. I, I think we got an amazing blend this morning. I, wow. I was working with Nicolas, Nicolas Rocher from Barcelona. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's working with us. I, I do the blend with him always. Uh, he came in Japan with us. And, uh, you know, wow. it, it takes two to tango. And I like to work uh, uh, with someone else because it's challenge, challenging you always. So, um, so okay. yeah. I, uh, I, now we're going to talk about the sake and, uh, and the characteristics, but I'm doing something maybe you don't like or you, don't, or you like or you don't care. But I'm, I warm up a little bit of your sake at, uh, yes. at 40, because 40. I want to compare it with the... With the it's actually, uh, it's a sake that uh, many uh, Western people, uh, somehow we tend to drink sake very cold. Yeah. And oh, it's sake. We put it in the fridge and we put some ice and and uh, and it must be cold. Otherwise, it's too uh, strong. And yes. uh, many people don't know that. Well, no, nobody better than you know that uh, uh, temperature and certain temperature is very important for for wines, yeah. but yeah. especially for sake. Yes. So, I know temperature has a huge impact on, on everything we drink: beer, sake, uh, whiskey, everything. So, uh, and sake especially, and, and the history. If you go back to the 70s, the 60s, people were yes. drinking much warm sake, especially abroad. That's the way yeah. people discover sake. Yeah. So it was not always good quality. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. And people were, can pie, can pie, can pie. So they were uh, no, no, no. drunk very fast. So, I, I, I actually, I, I didn't like warm sake at the beginning because I thought this, well, uh, Probably because you, when you, you you think about alcohol and warm alcohol, it's like ah. Uh, yeah. But uh, now I really enjoy and uh, I'm becoming a really uh, fan of warm sake. And to be honest, your sake warm is amazing. I mean, thank you, thank you. It's it's uh, it's more umami, umami yes. is driven, and and the, the feeling of sweetness is higher. But yes. uh, it's, it's very ba well balanced. But. Let's yeah. uh, let's see this. Um, <laughs> the the color. I don't know if people can appreciate, but yeah. uh, uh, of course, it's a clear sake, but it's slightly, very, very slightly yellow. Yes. Okay. And uh, probably because it has been aged, but also in the process. Uh, yes. When uh, when you mentioned the process, is is like. Um, when, if, if, because of course I, I know a little bit about sake and uh, I, I, I wrote uh, how you made this sake. I know what the direction you want to go. Yes. But if I see all the things you've done together, I would, I would think that would be too much. Because yes. I it would be too, too, too heavy in a way. And, yes. and instead it's very, um, in, in, on the nose, to me, uh, it has the profile of um, of uh, Jumai Shu. Yes. Uh, however, there is uh, in in an exam, for instance, I would might think maybe this is a, a ginjo or, or or something because there's some floral there as yes. well. And uh, but this is very complex. And I, I, uh, I, I like this comment very well. It's uh, and it's <laughs> the same with 2019 that I have here. Yeah. It's it's, it's more. We feel, but now it's Nama. So, but we feel it's it's like a Daiginjo more, but it's Junai, full Junai, but yeah. Yamai. Yeah. 2018 is Kimoto. It's Kimoto, so, yeah. Yeah, Kimoto, yeah. and 2019 is Yamai. So we just wow. made a little change there, just to, I think, was a, a good idea. So, but but yes, uh, some some specialists have taste and have the same comment as you said. Wow, this is a Junai. This umami profile, like yes, turn, yeah, aroma, everything, yeah. but there's a Ginjo style fruitiness. Mm. Uh, and I think it's because we've been changing a lot. Nine different parts. I have to change rice, lesh polis, change the koji, uh, the shubo starter, different temperature. You know, many aspects because it's not only about blending here. Yeah. Uh, because when I had the idea of blending, I, I said to them, okay, this is great. 
Now I've done that with your sake 2017. But would you mind to change a little bit some process? So it will give me six, eight, nine different sake that I could blend. And I, I, I want you to produce different sake that the result at the end will be much better. Yeah. So and they they ac they accept. So, but that was very tricky, like you said, because there's a lot of change. I ask, and this could be very powerful sake at the end, but it is not. It's elegance, freshness, acidity. You know, there's there's good acidity in this sake. Uh, very interesting. And and the idea what is to to make one one sake or or to have uh, uh, different ones. Different what, what... one. Yeah, different okay. one. That's why that's why the name. This is uh, th this is the real packaging. This yeah, is yeah. Blend zero zero one. Yeah, so, this is uh, one. Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. So th this is a sample only bottle. Yeah, yeah. New, but this is the the final packaging. Yeah, that's nice. So, yeah, yeah. Thank you. So uh, I wanted a dark bottle, uh, but very very dark, very black because it's a game changer at the same time. Yeah. And the dark bottle in Japan, as you know, are high yeah. and sake. Um, uh, so it's blend 001. They, there's a blend 002, the Daiginjo. That yeah. will be on the market this fall, September, more or less. Uh, wow. And then they will be blend 003, 04, 05. It yeah. will be a sparkling wine, uh, sparkling sake. Uh, yeah. And two, two, three years from now, more or less. Really? Yes. Uh, that's, yeah, I wanted to. That's, da that's dangerous. I know. I know. Uh, it's not easy to work with that. But uh, I, I'm passionate about champagne, about cava. I drink wow. a lot. It, it, mostly every day, I, I drink sparkling wine. I love it. And uh, there's not much shaky uh, sparkling that I find. They have the richness of like a Bollinger champagne. You know, this was that's, now, that's, like, uh, we we had uh, in the recent weeks like few chats about sake, of course, over here, and, um, and most of the people is also saying the same thing. Like, there's not really uh, well, there are a few, but it's yeah, yeah. normally the the, the average uh, sparkling sake is not good, to be no. honest. It's, no, it's, no, it's, no. it's lacking something. Yes. So I think that's uh, this. There's a key, uh, here a question that also is good that is in the conversation about. Uh, the aging game on, on yeah. sake and here obviously you are um, not changing the rules but changing the rules somehow because yeah. there is, sometimes there is this um, um, uh, thinking of freshness and keep the sake fresh and sell very very fast and, and all that and here you are playing a game that for me if I'm a, a distributor uh, it helps me a lot because I want to keep this sake. If I don't sell it now, I can sell it next year or exactly. uh, play with the with the vintage. So yes. this is very interesting. And the restaurant, they would like to have that. So what that, what, as, uh, what as, is here? As my goal was to do a sake near of the wine profile for mm -hmm. wine lover, that's my goal first. Uh, so, with a little, you know, sake has like five times less acidity than wine, more or less. Here, there's three times, let's say that. So there's yeah. a little bit more acidity. The aroma is more like a white wine. It's still sake. Huh? A, a Japanese tastes my sake. They know it's sake. It's, they, yeah. they, know, they, know, they know this is different. This is great. I made a taste to many Japanese people in Japan, to great sommelier, even here uh, to, uh, um, uh, to uh, oh, uh, Dos Parillos, what's her name? Uh, Tamae, Tamae. Tamae. Sorry, Tamae. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, she will kill me. Uh, I, made, I made a taste and she said, wow, wow, okay, this is amazing, but so different, you know? Yeah, Sake, yeah, but different. Yeah. So, but that, that's my goal. So uh, I made the, the, the guess, the bet to keep it in vats for one year. So it, it's just, you know, it, it's 12 months in vats. Why? Because I noticed that they had the, the powerness and the kind of molecules, aroma, that could age in time. So, okay. and the dark bottle with a glass a cork. Ah, okay. This is amazing glass cork. So this will keep for 10 years. Let me wow. tell you. Uh, uh, you know, I'm guessing because we, I that's, never made that's it. A, that's something that uh, it's very important. And I think it's, it's, it's clear now because um, 
we, we also had a, a chat about the aged sake. This, this is another story. I mean, I, I, it's, it's on the, on the, um, on the frontier between uh, uh, fresh sake and uh, aged sake. Yeah. However, the aromas are still for, from a fresh sake. Yeah. I, yes. I, I, I would like to see how it, it improves in the bottle after 10 years, but I'm sure it, it will, and it, it will still keep this um, freshness somehow. Yeah. I don't know if you, you, you know better than okay. me that you study the, the molecules and all that, yeah. but I think yeah. there are I, some... I, I think mm. it will keep uh, for sure five years. After that, we'll see, because we don't have yeah. the, the, the background to know about yeah. that. But... Um, He's got the, the kind of molecule and structure to age very well. You know, it could be a koshu. We can keep yeah. it longer and bath yeah. and bottle yeah. in two years or so three years of aging yeah. to be a koshu. But I like the idea of selling it now, drink it now, but also put some bottle aside and wait to see how, like a wine. You know, that's yeah. the idea. Yeah. Because... because uh, I, yeah. No, sorry. The, you, you uh, Many people might not know, but uh, I guess it's age... In the in the stainless tank, yeah, or yeah, yeah. because many yeah. people, uh, especially wine people, they think that uh, we we keep the sack in a in a in a uh, oak barrel. Yeah, which is uh, it's, it's possible in Japan, not uh, precisely with oak. Even though now I don't know, if you know, there are some uh, breweries that are using even sherry casks. Sherry casks, absolutely. Yeah, oh, I, I, was, so, I, wanted, I wanted to do something with sherry cask yeah, uh, two yeah, years ago. Yeah. I said, oh, I, I've been tasting two or three different sake with sherry cask. Was not completely, um, maybe I didn't get the good one, was not yeah. completely uh, a success, yeah. I think. Yeah. Because sherry cask, you know, it's like oak. Oak, yeah. you, you need to be very careful with sake because it's overpowered the sake, totally. Yeah. So, yeah. But there's some good. I, I've been tasting some good sake agent oak from yeah. Japan. Very interesting. So, but here it's it's uh, stainless steel and the uh, art um, and concrete. Hey, mm -hmm. that's it. It's, it's, it's more about time than about contact with oxygen. Yeah. It's more yeah. time. So then it's about all, and then it could age with time. They, it's funny because uh, there's some people, uh, specialists, uh, sake master uh, for level four of a W set, taste the sake and said, wow. Uh, did you blend different vintage? Because it's like we had a layer of all of koshu, maybe of three years, and very fresh sake. I said, yeah. no, this is 2018. That's it. But yeah. I, this is six sake, in fact. Three sake are June Mai with a lot of lactone aroma. Lactone is family of molecule of, uh, of more uh, apricot, peaches, coconut, very rich, yeah. very texture, full yeah. of umami. Yeah. And three other sake that are more anise-like taste. So similar of Sauvignon Blanc uh -huh. aroma. The other one, the lactone, are more Chardonnay style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I blend the, 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 that's what I wanted to do. So, and then when we blend that, not at an equal part, it's a different uh, yeah. equation. But at the end, I feel I have something similar somewhere as a Sauvignon Blanc from uh, Sancerre, but at the, the freshness, but at the same time, the rawness, the fullness, the, the creaminess, and the aroma of a uh, Meursault wine from Burgundy. Yeah. But yeah. all that and the sake dress, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, no, no, I, I'm very, it's very interesting. It's, it's a new, you I'm, know? And also it's very important because I, I also mentioned in a couple of times in, in these uh, chats that, uh, I feel that sometimes uh, um, sake makers, uh, because they think it's a trend or something, they are trying to make sake too much uh, uh, wine-like, yeah. and and, uh, and with high acidity and and yeah. which is which is good for for, for 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 I think to have food or something. But sometimes you cannot enjoy a bottle of those sakes because they are no. too much. No. And, uh, and here, it's even though you are a foreigner, you, you're doing something that they don't do, like blending. It's, I mean, in a blind taste, this is a sake. Okay, okay. this is not any other thing. Thank you. So this is very, thank you. Very thank you. 
Mm. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a classic guy, even if I'm still very, I look from the outside completely crazy and taste buds and molecule mm. both papillas and moleculas <laughs> and blah, 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 blah. Uh, I like, you know, my style. I like classic wine. I like to, and I respect tradition. And yeah. I, I, don't, I didn't want to change the sake. You know, yeah. it's so many, you know, his story is yeah. so large. Yeah. I, I want to learn from that. You know, yeah. I, need, I, I have so much to learn more than bring. Now I'm just bringing an idea from abroad with my knowledge, but I'm not, you know, I, I don't make the yeah. sake. I help them to make the sake, but if they let me alone and, and the brewery tomorrow yeah. to make it, yeah. it will take me five years maybe to arrive to this quality. Yes, yes. So basically here you are uh, blending different rice. I'll uh, then, then you also uh, use uh, also in the in the zero two you are using the white koji. The, yes. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yes. White koji uh, because. Um, Is it? Uh, yeah. Also the white. Yeah. I've been reading a lot about koji and uh, and tasting many things and normally everybody's working with uh, yellow koji. White yeah. koji is more for shushu. Yeah, especially yeah. so yeah. shushu is a, it's not sake. It's a yeah. more alcoholic drink, twenty five percent and more, and it's yeah. quite different. So yeah. it's difficult to work with white koji. It's not easy, but it's bring more citric acid and more yeah. fruitiness. Maybe yeah. that's a, a one reason that it's look like a daiginjo. Maybe. Uh, and not only that, but it's maybe one of the reason. It's not 100% white koji. It's, yeah. it's, about, it's about 35, more or less 38% white koji. It's a, okay. it's a different part, as we've done many different sake. So some with white, some with yellow, because uh, we needed to test and don't want yeah. to ruin totally the... No, that, that, because I was going to say that, that uh, I have one sake in our portfolio that is made from 100% uh, uh, white koji, but wow. it's, it's very, very... Uh, yeah, it's strong. The yeah. acidity is, is, is like, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's like too much in a way. It's yeah, good yeah. for for change the palate, and I think it's it's, it's amazing for um, in a gastronomic experience to have this food with this sake. But again, I wouldn't have a bottle, a uh, full bottle of that sake in uh, in. Uh, but in a but meal. but remember, uh, uh, when we talk about food, a lot of people said, "Ah, oh, sake need more acidity because acidity is good with food." Yeah, I say not always. Not always. That's one of the major reasons in the past we always heard that sake is good with everything. Yeah. This was bothering me. You know, I don't believe that something is good with everything. It's impossible. <laughs> But sake, uh, because I have less acidity, no bitterness normally, no yeah. tannins, yeah. more umami than wine, yeah. uh, help to bring more on the comfort level of harmony with yeah. many, many, many food. So yeah. my goal to bring more acidity is not to be a white wine, just a little bit yeah. more, but I don't yeah. want to lose this, this less acidity, texture, umami, because yeah. this is what makes sake so good with food. Because umami yeah. of sake go to the umami of the fish, the umami yeah. of the cheese. Cheese is so difficult with red wine. It's terrible. It's no good. And 90% of the, of the cheese are better with white wine or sake. Sake with cheese is amazing. That, so, that's something that uh, I, I, I really like that you mentioned here because many people will be surprised. And it's a good way to bring people to sake. Yes. Through this, uh, because the sushi sake thing is very obvious. No, but, yes. uh, but of course... There is a question here, and, and there are many, but uh, I try to review, and, and if, if I don't answer, or we don't answer them, please let us know. Yes. The main difference, uh, white and yellow koji. Well, basically, uh, you help me, if, uh, but uh, no, to make sake, normally we use the yellow koji. Yeah. And uh, for the sochu, which is a distilled uh, alcohol, uh, drink, they use the white. So normally for making sake, they don't use the, the, the white koji. But now some people is uh, seeing again that uh, it can change the profile of the sake being more um, uh, higher on acidity. So that's why they, they want to use that. Exactly. Yeah. Very interesting. It's not easy, especially when you work uh, Yamaha or Kimoto method. This is a, a 
and craft sake method, you know, uh, like 90% of the sake produced in Japan are shukuju method. So that mm. means at the mo- they, they will add some lactic acid to yes. help to transform the, the, the enzyme of the, yes. of, the, of the rice and the sugar to help start the fermentation. So, but we don't do that. We work and craft with Yamai or Kimoto method. 2018 yes. is Kimoto method, but this is very difficult work and very tricky. So, yes. especially with white koji. But yes. There, yes. There's, bla- there's black koji also, huh? by the yes. way. Yes. There's black yes. koji, yes. very similar of white koji, but... I haven't tasted any, any sake made from uh, black koji, which is the one they, they use for awamori. Yeah, exactly, yes. exactly. Yes. So, but it's very difficult to work and very dusty. Very, uh, yeah. it's not interesting. It's wow. interesting to read about Koji in the Noma book, no, Noma restaurant. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. The one yes. about fermentation. Exactly. Yeah. There's a chapter on Koji. So interesting. Not talking only about sake, but about food. Yeah, Usually yeah, yeah. using uh, Koji for barley and everything. It's very interesting. Yeah. 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 And uh, uh, Francois, what, so this is like a, uh, a joke because everybody, somebody, <laughs> and probably the same people, is a group of people. They are always saying the hot sake and gorgonzola cheese. <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. is, uh, is like a classic. Yeah, yeah great classic. Yeah, I, I love koshu uh, sake with uh, blue cheese. It's very interesting because very similar as the sauterm aroma. You know, it's sotolon aroma, mm. curry, nuts, uh, honey. Yeah, can die fruit so uh, so sometimes with blue cheese it goes well not not each time but sometimes yeah, yeah. Gorgonzola, who is less uh, powerful than Rockford yeah. yeah so um now I was it was a good exercise this week a, a friend of mine in in UK she wanted I write an, a little article about food and sake and, and things like that and I used a little bit uh, and I mentioned, of course, your, your theories and all that. And uh, uh, also, uh, Ferran uh, Centelles was here last... Uh, yes, I listened to two, two days, days ago. ago. Very interesting. Yeah. And, uh, and, yeah, somehow it's, it's easier with sake, as you mentioned. Uh, and even though it's, uh, nothing can go well with everything, in, in the, especially with sake, but I think it's a little bit easier... Yes, uh, for sure. And uh, when we do the tasting, we can do it by affinity or or by contrast, no? Yes, yes, yes. But with with uh, with sake, what do you enjoy more? You think for for food pairing, uh, what kind of uh, combination you like the most, or, or you yeah. think are like perfect uh, combination or yeah. harmonies? There, there's many things for sure. Uh, depend, but let's say let's try to be general. Uh, yeah, I'm always talking on a on an aromatic point of view because uh, my theory of molecular harmony is based on aroma. And uh, yeah. uh, today I, I can say it, uh, aroma is much more important than the matching wine and food or second food or beer and food whatsoever. Uh, because when you get an aromatic match, uh, you get another level. It's amazing. Yeah. You don't need to take care of acidity, bitterness, umami. It's not important anymore. It's just aroma. If, yeah, if you get an aromatic match, if you don't get so. From that point, uh, Daiginjo Sake is more on anise-like taste molecule, but not only. This is Sauvignon Blanc kind. So that means basil, uh, 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 cilantro, uh, tarragon, uh, all the root vegetable. This is the anise-like. So whatever you cook, even the lamb, you can do a lamb with a lot of uh, star anise, anise-like taste aroma, and serve a Daiginjo, and you will have a great match. Wow. It's more of our aromatic point of view. There's a lot of floral ester and daiginjo. We were talking yeah. about floral. Roses, yeah. aroma. Roses is linked to lychee. Just serve a bowl of lychee, fresh lychee with the daiginjo is amazing. It's so yeah. good. And yeah. Just eating lychee like that is so good. Then, then all the, the fish that are um, uh, raw, like sashimi, or... or um, I would say that, uh, wow, I'm looking for my English. Um, uh, salmon, salmon raw, but uh, marinated, sorry, marinated yeah. salmon. Yeah. Uh, so it, you bring acidity, you bring lemon aroma, yeah. lemon juice or lime. So usually there will be some fennel. There's a good chance there will be some fennel or dill 
near yeah. of that. And then it's linked uh, with, uh, again. Uh, oyster from Brittany. Not because my, my uh, woman, Isabel, is from Brittany, but uh, <laughs> oyster from Brittany has more cucumber molecule. And cucumber is related to green melon, and green melon is related to ginjo. Exactly. Yeah. Like ginjo, yeah. totally. Yeah. So you see, wow. this is very interesting uh, mix. Then you get junmai. That's the odd. So if we say there's two important uh, yeah. categories, junmai, junmai is more about lactone. Lacton yeah. is Amon, Amon from Spain. Yeah. Uh -huh. A good Junmai, high temperature, 14, 16, not too, too cold, and, and, and a large good glass like that, and some Hamon. Wow. This is, yeah, this yeah. is, yeah. I, mean, I, I, I like that so much. I can taste and drink that every day. This is amazing. Yeah. But Amon is also pork. That mean pork. Uh, if you go uh, around the world in the United States and Canada, even in Great Britain, they will cook pork with, uh, with uh, apricot or peach or mango. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is very good because it's lacton, a kind of aroma for Jumai. So it's very good. So you can go, you can go in that direction. Umami. How umami food? Uh, scallops. pan sear scallop, but well pan sear. So when yeah. it's near to burn and to 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 be sticky this is umami if you want you want to experience umami at home and you don't know what it is you go buy pan, scallops you pan sear very very hot pan sear and everything is sticky on on the pan you eat it you see this is full umami it's like oh. mm -hmm. yeah you drink a junmai and high temperature, not too, if it's too cold, you- It will be to, too, too um, uh, close and under, yeah. a little bit bitter, maybe. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And we don't want that. Truffle, black truffle with Junmai. My sake, the, this blend, there was the one we done uh, two times, dinner and uh, pre, pre lounge dinner, one at Dos Palios and one at uh, Biso restaurant at Hotel Sofia in Barcelona. We done a truffle dinner with, for the media with Carles uh, Theodore, wow. and we create two dishes of truffle to go with the sake. That was amazing. Black truffle with katsu buchi from wow. Japan. And, and, and uh, you know, when we did, uh, we, we, when we brought the, the kimura and um, yes. the san I couldn't uh, go to Barcelona, but uh, I, it was a slightly different because it was a blend, but now that uh, with H, H uh, fish is amazing this. I, I was at this. I was at the dinner in Dos Palios of Kimura. Oh. And, wow, what a dinner! That's... It was amazing with my friend Christophe Brunet. It was great, great, great dinner we had there. Uh, those guys are crazy. They, yeah, they, yeah. They age fish like sushi show in Tokyo. They do age fish. This is a completely another minding yeah. of sushi and sashimi. Yeah. This is somewhere yeah. else, and the, and the, the tempura. It's uh, yes. amazing, and also uh, also uh, truffle, black truffle with Parmesan cheese and coffee, with a junmai. Yeah, the, the, wow. you can experience just uh, taking a thirty-six month, twenty-four months Parmigiano, uh, Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. Yeah, you take a chunk and you dip in your espresso coffee, just like that. You you taste the both together are amazing. And you you, you did Jumai. something with with uh, Ferran in in, uh, yes. in the bush, you know. With... Yes, wow. absolutely. Yeah, uh, we've created. Uh, Ferran was working on Parmesan cheese, and uh, I talked to him about uh, coffee and many other ingredients. And he said, "Coffee, yeah, that's that's Italy." And he created a, a crystal of Parmesan. So it's like um, a very translucent sheet uh, of Parmesan but it tastes coffee also and licorice. There's no licorice, but at the end it tastes licorice. It's very interesting. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's, it's, it's amazing. And so in, in, uh, yeah, many people, I don't know, uh, listen to us, but uh, I guess that um, it's a discovery because when we talk about sake, normally we are always linked to Japan. And of course yes. it, it goes well, but also people, uh, when they go to Japan, maybe they are, like amazed by by the different sort of foods you can get because it's not only sushi and sashimi <coughs> and um uh in in uh, in some regions in japan they didn't know what was sushi until uh, 30 or or or, exactly. or 20 years ago because there, there was no transportation fresh uh, exactly. fish thing so it's uh, it's interesting to 
these these uh, sort of things yeah and japanese food is amazing uh, for me is the, the best food and history of gastronomy uh, mm. but there's not only sushi there's much yes, more than yeah. that yeah and, yeah and, uh, it's the product and you mentioned mentioned before uh, uh robuchon that uh, of course he's very famous all over the world but in japan especially it's uh, it's uh, very well known and he opened um a few years ago with dasai a restaurant yes. focused on on sake and his gastronomy and his son that i met in a in a sake tasting competition i hope this year i probably it, it will not be held but um uh i met him and and uh, he's also dealing with sake and and wine so he's uh, ah. selling a wine to to japan and bringing sake to france but uh, Yeah that's uh, that's very interesting and and, and Dasai is a great uh, great house they you know they they bring something new they change the yeah. path they 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 bring the people of sake so much around yeah. the world so yeah it's very important But, by the way have you tried there is uh uh the um, uh, sakes that they are doing blends uh regis camus with heaven heaven sake yeah. and uh, I don't know when is the project uh, uh taking place but the um, uh, Dom Perignon the uh, Richard Geoffroy Richard yes. Geoffroy Richard yes. Geoffroy used to be for 35 years the the master seller of Dom Perignon yeah. he is an incredible man he's a master of blending champagne is about blend so yeah. Yeah. and he 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 was in love with uh, sake in Japan since so many years so he get a, a retreat of Dom Perignon like Two years ago, three years yeah, ago, more. Yeah. And and they announced that he was he was about to doing a sake uh, in Japan. So when yeah. I read that, it was like what I think they they announced that last fall. I said, wow, good timing. Uh, first first the people at Taneko were a bit like say, oh wow, it's going to be competition. I said, no no no. no. Charles of Rouen is a well known man around the world, and it's another. Foreigner who come to Japan to bring yeah. something new in the in the sake industry. This is the best that could happen. This is oh. amazing. I didn't taste the sake yet, but I want to taste it. Uh, yeah, I I don't know if it's um, uh, the the project is already done or 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 uh, yeah, what they, stage they they launched they launched the first sake in Japan. I think last November. Uh, oh. Say with uh, Mitsui, Mitsuzu, Mitsuzu, Mit. I, I forget the name. Mitsuzu, Mitsuzui. Yeah. Uh, very famous uh, sake brewery. So they okay. done the project there with uh, with uh, Richard Geoffroy. But it's What? not sell abroad. I think yet. Yeah. I think. Yeah. But uh, I, but next time I go to Japan, I will I will taste it. No, but but uh, yeah, as you said, this is very very good. Not only for. Um, I mean, for the sake in general, because it's it's a new window, and of course, always that uh, they respect uh, more or less the the sake. We and need, this, we need to remember that uh, uh, sake industry, as the consumption uh, national consumption go low, uh, they're trying to sell abroad. So yeah. and but it, the, it's going uh, higher, but not that high fast. Yeah. It, yeah. it, it will, I think, because a lot of people say since five, six years, the next big thing in beverage business, uh, drink business will be sake. But it's not yeah. happened yet. But I think yeah. with people like yeah. Charles Geoffroy and other people from abroad coming there, bringing new and people like Dasai and everything, this yeah. helps to, to, to make yeah. noise and bring yeah. new, new kind of quality sake. So, yeah, but, because but, still now, yeah. uh, only around... Uh, I guess it's four percent or something like that. It's exported, so it's very, yes. very little. And now with COVID, uh, it's oh. very difficult for the small brewery in Japan. Uh, yeah. So we need we need uh, people to drink sake more and yeah. more around the world because they yeah. will need help. This no, no, they are good. they are very in a, in a very bad situation. And yes. I was reading something that I was amazed this morning in Facebook that a brewery. It's like kind of begging, please. Uh, we we buy our sake at a special price because blah blah. I was like, wow, Japan never do that. And no, I was no, but, a little uh, bit. But, but, the, but the, the media don't talk much about the COVID in Japan now because they talk when it starts, but it's not yeah. go, going very good right now. So everything is yeah. closed, you know. Yeah. So it's the state of alarm there also. 
So uh, it will be very difficult. So uh, yeah. drink second. Yeah. Very important. To. But on the other side, I feel that Japan has uh, some. They are used to to these. Um, uh, uh, catastrophes and all that, and, yes. and they, they have yes. a very samurai spirit. And, and when they wake up, I was leaving, the, not leaving, sorry, I was just there when the tsunami happened okay. in 2011. And yeah, I remember that I saw like Japan very desolated. And but after after one year or something, it was the number one uh, country for. Uh, uh, people, especially young people that they married or something, they go to, to Japan and now <laughs> in the recent years, it was, I mean, the, the foreigners and the food, the food is going to, to all the fancy restaurants. It was like amazing. So it's I hope maybe, they come back yet. It's maybe the most resilient people in the world because yeah. they, they live on a on a on a earth on a earth on a on a land that there's a lot of earthquake tsunami yeah. you know the story uh, was very difficult so it, they are very resilient so uh, yeah. we need no. we had to learn a lot from them so much and uh, francois what about sake made outside of japan what uh, what is your I find that great uh, because uh, i've been tasting some some good thing here in catalonia there's Great, very, very good sake. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Seda Liquida is yeah. very good. So, yeah. I, I, I work with this sake. Well, I've done the wine list, uh, aromatic wine list to the Bissot restaurant. I put Seda Liquida on it. It's wow. so good. Wow. So, I, I'm, I'm, you know, when it's good whatsoever, people bring something new. They, they, they bring back the tradition from Japan, trying to make it somewhere else. Why not? Uh, and even Dasai now is open a brewery in the United yeah. States uh, yeah. on the West Coast. So yeah. great, for sure. This yeah. is good. Yeah. These are all, all, all helps. Uh, yes, this. yes. You know that Antonio, uh, which is the, the, yeah. the, the, the owner of Seda Liquida, and a group of people, including myself, and, and here there's uh, um, European sake uh, watching us. Uh, we are trying to create um, a European Sake Institute for helping uh, people to, to get knowledge about sake, but also, and I think this is a little bit our duty because Japan don't do that, to protect sake. Because uh, as you said, maybe uh, it's already like a fashionable drink and uh, yeah, many yeah, people yeah. might take advantage and maybe put sake because it's not regulated. You, you can put sake... No anything it's not nihon shu uh, no. but if you put sake it's everything and and uh, unfortunately might be some people that will make uh, uh, bad sake which is not even sake no. but they, maybe but they put some if, white if rice I can, <laughs> if yeah. i can help you uh, on that project will be a great pleasure yeah that, that, something that would be I amazing know, because i think i think is um is a community now I see in in the the recent years and especially now that I'm doing this that you connect with everybody. It's like in the wine world in the old days maybe that there yes. were few people. Now yeah. there's many people, but in the sake world now is the time that you get a lot of people and everybody seems to be very nice and, and yeah. uh, it's it's a kind of a nice feeling to have like a community for that. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, Yesterday I forgot. Now I, I see we have thirty uh, seconds left, but uh, we come back and say goodbye. And uh, actually, okay. it passed again very very fast because I have yes. I wanted to, to to ask you some other things. So <laughs> we do we do <laughs> another one. Sake. We do another one one day. No problem. Thank yeah. you so much for the invitation. Huh? No, no, um, very, very appreciate. Thank you so much. Uh, well, now it's going to close, so we, we, we do yeah. it again and, and say goodbye with, with time. Okay? Thank you for everyone. Uh, okay. Kampai. Kampai, <laughs> Kampai. Kampai. Salud. <laughs>